mercury-containing vaccines may help not harm kids, according to two new studies in the journal Pediatrics. There have been widespread concerns that mercury-based preservatives in vaccines might impair the neurological development of children. These new studies suggest that the opposite, that the preservatives may actually be associated with improved behavior and mental performance. So mercury uh, literally annihilates brain cells like no other heavy metal in microscopic amounts, much lower than what they're injecting into kids. But if you read off a teleprompter, it's magic. It's absolute magic. And all these brain damaged kids and the lowering IQs in the West and the skyrocketing cancer, it's all just a big accident. But that Merck scientist said, <laughs> we just gave to the Russians to kill their ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. Trust the government. They love you now, and you know they do. I shouldn't get upset, should I? I shouldn't be up here at night fighting the globalist. I shouldn't be obsessed with this. I, I shouldn't have had those nightmares last night knowing they're killing us on purpose. I should just shave my head for all the kids dying around me of cancer. I've got a bunch of people in the office with girlfriends and young people dying of cancer. I should just shave my head and go for a jog and feel real good and give some money to the killers instead of actually finding out they're doing it to us on purpose. Because you don't want to actually save anybody. You just want to feel good. So I apologize. I really do. Well, I, uh, I don't know what to say right now. We're going we're gonna to go to a Darren McBreen report here from... Uh, the martial law takeover federalization drills in Denver, Colorado, and then we'll, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Hey, we're here in Denver, Colorado, and we're covering Operation Mountain Guardian. Now, this is a large-scale terrorism drill, and 100 different agencies actually took part in the exercise. Now, this was a test for Homeland Security and FEMA to test their capabilities in what they referred to as a catastrophic situation involving a terrorist attack. One of the primary locations of the drill took place right behind me at the uh, Sports Authority Field where the exercise involved participants processing children in and out of the FEMA camp that they set up inside of the stadium. Now authorities kept us from entering the stadium compound but we have confirmed that it was indeed, it was indeed used as a relocation facility for children's and teachers who were part of the drill. Now Aaron Dykes is coming up next, he's kind of going to give us a bullet point breakdown of the events that we witnessed today. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News, Prison Planet TV, InfoWars.com. Obama is notoriously a liar. We need to go to where the real architecture of government is, and it's not in a president. Wall Street has hijacked Washington in broad daylight. Well, Obama's already fudging. He's yeah. fudged since day one in this election. The elite are using Obama to pacify the public so they can usher in the North American Union by stealth, launch a new Cold War, and continue the occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan. The globalists are outside all the nations. That gives them safety, and they play countries off against each other. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. What they're doing is using the existence of the United States to act out their Wall Street fantasies of world domination and maintaining their capital structures and maintaining their system of looting. The fight that this country has been waging since its inception is for the central bankers not to take over the country. President Barack Obama is only the tool of a larger agenda. Senator Obama had a desire to do some meetings. Others have a desire to meet with him tonight in a private way, and that's what we're doing. Presidential candidate Barack Obama was publicly criticizing the North American Free Trade Agreement in a bid for votes, but privately telling Canadian officials not to worry about it. If you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military force. 
What do you call this thing where you get this false sense of gratification, but because a black man is in office, everything's gonna be all right? No, everything's not gonna be all right. So I know how unpopular it is to be seen as helping banks right now, especially when everyone is suffering in part from their bad decisions. I promise you, I get it. The Obama deception, the truth strikes back. Get your copy of the Obama deception today at InfoWars.com or download it in super high quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Okay, we're recording now, Jones, so whenever, uh, whenever you're ready. All right. Stupid monkey suit. All right. Um, okay. All right, my friends, we're back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. And in studio, we've got Tad Lumpkin, the director of the amazing animated film documenting the history of the banking cartel, American Dream, because you've got to be asleep to believe it. Uh, this is definitely cyanide to the globalist. Tad, great to have you here hey, with us. Hey, great. Thanks for having me, Alex. Listen, uh, obviously, we're, we're promoting the film. We've got it in the InfoWars store. You guys have been great. You've put it out for free on the web, showing us really about the passion uh, for liberty to fight the collectivist Borg. I wanted to have you here because last time, uh, you know, we had you via video connection. It was powerful stuff. I wanted to have you here to talk about your philosophy and give us a hint of some of the new projects coming out. Well, I mean, uh, the, the, our overall philosophy is one where we feel like the path to um, human prosperity and the path to having uh, uh, the greatest life that you can is one that's based on individual liberty. And so all our, all our media, and the reason that we made the, the Federal Reserve uh, doc was because we felt like people don't understand how these things work and how they go towards this sort of collectivist mentality that takes all people's individual identity puts them into a collective and just merely makes them sort of a cog in a machine. And you're looking at who's running the collective. The collectivists never think about, well, who, who programs this? They're always saying, we'll have a giant computer. That's one of their things that will run everything. Well, who programs the computer? Well, I mean, basically what happens is, is you sort of got two levels of people. You have people who are completely sold into this philosophy and understand it and have reached a level of power that they can install it and then there's the people who sort of zombie follow the the power a lot of politicians and things like that they do these things because they just want to get ahead in the world and they want to they want to get rich they want to have more power and sure, so they short just sort term. of go along right and then there's other people who are wholly sold out to an idea that you know we need to control things not only for our own wealth and gain but to make sure that our that our personal long term existence comes at all costs, regardless of what that so is. So basically, you want to legalize freedom and let individual free will uh, be the ultimate goal. Basically, you're an extremist terrorist. <laughs> by some, by by some people, yes, I'm sure that the uh, the extreme left would uh, would would probably call. But it. if we look at history, collectivism, command and control does not work. It creates unspeakable travesties, monstrosities. And that's why the globalists say, well, we're trying to be scientifically tyrannical. It'll be different this time. But we've 
we've seen it's not been different. I mean, even the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. And that's what's scary about a centralized tyranny. Its mistakes are even that much bigger, and then it strives to cover them up. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And I think what happens is, is somehow there's this tolerance for uh, a certain type of uh, dehumanization of people, and then there's not of another one. I was actually talking to uh, uh, my partner on the way over here, and we were talking about the whole idea that it's like, somehow you have movie stars wearing Che Guevara stuff, and it's cool, you know? And it's like in Los Angeles, there's you know a, a restaurant called Mao's, Chairman Mao's Kitchen. I mean, these people killed tens of millions of people in brutal ways because they were bent on building their collective. Well, Mao, admittedly, the Chinese say he killed 80 plus million. Our government says 64 million. But I mean, and, and exactly, I see young people wearing Shea shirts and Mao shirts. And, right. And like, do they have any idea just how out of control this is? And what it shows you is, is that if you brand things right and you market ideas right and you soften people to these things, they not only accept them they actually elevate them and embrace them and i mean that's that's what we see all all over in just you take one horrific thing and if you package it up right somehow it no longer not only become isn't horrific it actually becomes cool it's and, sexy it's yeah, stylish that's right and, and 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 they'll defend these people uh it's it's truly sickening because the last time i checked denver Toronto, all these mega cities have Mao worship restaurants. Absolutely, and you know that extends too to our, to the political movement. And part of the role that we really want to play is being able to market liberty in the way that that the leftist control agenda has been marketed. I mean. Well, notice, notice, they will market, they will sell books, films, everything. That's right. And so you got to support us. But anytime a libertarian, a constitutionalist, a pro-human, a pro-freedom person yep. tries to ever build anything, it's like, how dare you make money? And, and, and then they use this guilt trip on us when they use government to take our money and then fund MSNBC with bailout money. Yep. That's moral at the point of a gun to take money. But if I sell a DVD or a book or if you do, we're evil. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And people... We need to go in and we need to get into the system that makes money and is profitable because the reason mass media and the media oligarchy is, is, is what it is, is is primarily because they do it at a big scale. So I mean, if, if we want to get our ideas out there, we have to find a way to reach a mass audience and that's what we want to do. We want to be able to tell the story of liberty in a way that connects to a mass market, not dilute the message, but tell it in a way that can that can rebrand it the same way Barack Obama says the same thing that Bush says before him. They're all control guys, but all they do is hope and change. And you know what? It doesn't mean anything, but people want to be a part They'll of it. They'll have a new slogan, but continue the exact same That's agenda. Right. That's right. And because, well, this guy's got browner skin than Bush, things must be different. Then folks figure that out. That's right. So now the Democrats want to throw him under the